What is it that drives us to do more than we could ever do if we had a clear secular motive? And what is it that has also caused the most destructive and numerous wars in the history of mankind? Religion. With the recent events in New York Times Square and acts of terrorism around the world, religion has come under close scrutiny. However, in our day and age, religion is in large measure becoming much more secular, more than we can imagine. And it's becoming harder to separate the person from the religion. I bet that if I went to someone randomly in the street and asked them what they thought about Muslim, Muslims and Islam, the first thing that would come to their mind would be a terrorist. While in fact these terrorists make up less than 1% of the Muslim population. And the community rises up against them. In New York, when Mr. Shazad tried to bomb New York Times Square, the community of Muslims in New York rose up and declared themselves separate from this act. All religions are fundamentally the same. There are different ways of looking at them, and that's why we fight. Take a look at this slide. The color of this slide is turquoise. No, it's aquamarine. What do you guys think? The same color. So all religions have similarities. All believe that some things are beyond our control. All believe that we must get, live good lives in order to achieve eternal peace and happiness. And all believe that their God, whatever name it has, loves them. Show me a religion that says you can kill. Show me a religion that says you can cheat. Show me a religion that says you can steal. All religions are fundamentally the same. They're like, if we were in Dallas and we needed to get to Houston, different religions would be car, train, boat, going around Galveston. Different ways of getting to the same goal, fundamentally the same thing. The crux of my argument is that all gods, whatever name we attach to them, love us all equally. How can a god then condone persecution or the belief that one group is right and the other one is wrong? It's like asking a parent which child they love most. I have a younger brother in here, and if I asked my dad, he'd probably say something like, oh, Hirsch, you're my favorite eldest son, right? <laughs> so all, God loves all of the religions equally because they're all ideas of his beloved creations. All can live together. My idea is that originally all of us knew the truth, whatever it was. And slowly, as human nature dictates, we separated. We started picking ideas that we believed were most important to us, and we started taking a selfish pride in our beliefs. This led to anger, which leads to fighting. Eventually, a split occurred, and this is how different religions were formed. Competition of religions, as I like to call it. Of course, the very idea of religion is something that's based on faith. Faith is something that can't be proven. Think about it. Faith tells us that you have to believe, you have to trust, and you can't scientifically prove it. So if we say that this is true, how can we say that you can prove religion? And the reason that we fight about religions is because you're trying to prove to yourself that your religion is right. By fighting someone else and putting them down, you provide a secure ground for yourself. Mahatma Gandhi, a respected figure throughout the world, once said, the soul of religion is one, but it is encased in a multitude of forms. Once again, the idea that all religions are fundamentally the same. We just look at them through the lens of different people and different places. Once again, a recurring theme in this argument is that equal love idea, where God, whatever name we give him, loves us all, loves us all equally, and loves our ideas. He loves who we are. Even people who don't believe in a god usually believe in some benevolent supreme authority. No one believes that God hates you or doesn't like you. Religious discrimination is not over. It's just, in the public eye, carried out to a much subtler degree. Think about this phrase, indifference is worse than hate. When someone hates you, at least you know you still matter. They still think about you every day, even if it's in a negative view. You affect them. If someone's indifferent to you, you don't matter. Nothing you do has an effect on their life. And we as humans know that the majority of things we do is to make an effect, make someone notice us. That makes us feel good. The problem today is not that it is in a certain degree, but the main problem today is that different religions are beginning to not associate with each other. This is the worst thing that could happen. We as humans already divide ourselves by countries, by political allegiances, by our favorite actor, the types of bread we like. So why throw religion into this division soup? Because after all, division soup is not tasty.